physical nature of matter as you know this include three things number one everything around us is made up of tiny pieces or particles second particles which make up the matter are constantly moving and third one particles which make up matter are atoms or molecules so now we have to prove these physical nature of matter by experiment so we pick up one by one first of all <coughs> evidence for presence of particles in matter there are many evidence for the existence of particles in matter and their motion come from the experiment on diffusion and brownian motion <coughs> so first of all you have to perform a simple experiment in your home usually you have to dissolve sugar in a glass okay so if i perform experiment what you have to do take one beaker okay fill this beaker with water up to 100 ml okay now you have to add 1 teaspoon of sugar now what happen <coughs> you have to stir this solution okay after stirring is there any change in volume of this beaker the answer is no why so what observations you have seen this experiment after making solution we see that sugar particles are not seen by naked eyes means sugar particle become invisible why this happen as you know as you dissolve the sugar in this beaker then we see that first of all there were crystals like this and as you add these crystals in the water they break up into small fragments suppose this crystal break up like this and the particles are very very small that we cannot see these particles with naked eyes and these particles distribute in this water homogeneously so finally we can't see these particles with naked eyes now in second experiment in this beaker also you are adding a block of wood take same beaker of 100 ml fill with water up to 100 ml now you add one block of wood in this beaker now what you see respect to volume here volume will be increased volume will be increased as you know both block of wood and sugar are matter both are matter but in case of sugar sugar get dissolved in this water and volume remain same but in case of wood it does not do resolve and the volume of beaker rises what this happen as we know both wood and sugar are matter and composed of small particles or tiny pieces <coughs> both are discontinuous but in case of wood the intermolecular forces are very strong okay but in sugar intermolecular forces are very less so it get dissolved so from this experiment we can conclude that matter is non continuous and non continuous means it is composed of small particles okay now evidence 2 now i have told you that these particles are constantly moving now we have to prove how these particles are moving <coughs> so for this we have to perform an experiment movement of 
movement of pollen grains in water. There was a scientist named as Robert Brown. He performed an experiment on movement of pollen grains in water in 1827. What he do? He take a container and fill the container with water. Fill the container with water. And add some pollen grains in this water. He add some pollen grains in the water. This is pollen grains. Now, <coughs> there is a solution of pollen grains in water. Now, we cannot see these pollen grains with naked eyes. So, he utilized a microscope. And through microscope, he want to see the pollen grains in the container. So what he see? He see that these pollen grains are moving like this manner. And all of you know, this movement is in a irregular manner. This movement is in is in irregular manner, or we can say zigzag zigzag motion. So by performing the, this experiment, Robert Brown told that particles in matter are constantly moving in a zigzag motion in a zigzag motion like this ok like this particles are constantly moving in a zigzag motion <coughs> and for this experiment this phenomenon is known as Brownian motion you can see here Brownian Brownian motion was given the name by Robert Brown so Brownian related to the name of Robert Brown okay so we can say zigzag motion of particles known as Brownian motion now Brownian motion is observed mainly in gases and liquids in solids it is negligible now I will tell you another experiment of Brownian motion. All of you used to go in movies. In movies what we see there is a beam of light strike on the curtain of movie. On the curtain. Now in this path of beam you see many particles which are moving here and there. So this motion is nothing but Brownian motion. Likewise in a dark room when a beam of sunlight enters through a small hole then in the path of that flash we see many small dust particles moving randomly this is nothing but Brownian motion ok so now Brownian motion is clear to all. <coughs> now, dependence of Brownian motion. Dependence of Brownian motion on temperature. There is simple relation. Brownian motion is constantly, uh, Brownian motion is directly proportional to temperature. If temperature increase, then Brownian motion will also increase. You can see this experiment in your home. Whenever your mom <coughs> used to cook food, then in another room other than kitchen, you can smell the food while it is cooking. Because that time there is a more temperature of food and due to this temperature movement of particles increases and you can smell the, this food on another room. While in the morning when food become cold the temperature become less then you can't see you can't smell this food in another room if you have to smell then you have to go in the kitchen then you can smell so simply we can say brown in motion is dependent on temperature